Ah, oh boy, time now for another episode of Mr. Nelson's Sunday Comics. And this time we're going to look at characters from Archie Comics. No, not the gang at Riverdale, no. Uh, although uh, they, that was a very successful line. Uh, inspired a lot of uh, uh, ideas and stuff. And uh, certainly uh, Love and Rockets and all that. And uh, in eventually got its own TV show on CW. But it's uh, almost unrecognizable. I mean, it's some sort of, I don't know supernatural teen soap opera crap i don't know. <laughs> never watched an episode saw some ads but that's about it uh, but there was also a superhero line often referred to as the red circle line i think that was like a separate imprint they tried and stuff like that but the thing of it is uh these characters they of uh, several entities have tried and tried and tried to uh, dc comics tried several times to uh uh to make something uh, with these characters but they just never really were able to return. They came out in the heyday of uh, the 40s, which in you know, World War II and all that, and the superheroes were very popular then. And then after the war was over, they kind of all faded. And until, you know, the Red Scare in the, uh, in the United States destroyed the comic book industry, <laughs> the superheroes was the only thing that was kind of left to, uh, to be allowed. You know, they got rid of all the popular sci-fi and horror uh, comics and that sort of thing. But uh, characters like uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, just didn't, uh, you know, just couldn't ever really come back. Um, uh, and of course, uh, he, I believe he does predate uh, Captain America as uh, the first, uh, you know, guy who basically wears the American flag as his costume. So, so there we go. Uh, so here is a uh, title that he shared with this other character called the Wizard. No, that's not Superman. <laughs> Uh, he must have shopped at the same uh, clothing store as Superman. But anyway, so um, this is the first issue, and uh, we'll go through it, um, uh, you know, week by week. So the first story will be a S.H.I.E.L.D. story, and let's let's take a look. So here we are at the cover, starring the G-Man Extraordinary and the man with the super brain, S.H.I.E.L.D. Wizard Comics number one, The S.H.I.E.L.D., The Wizard. And they are shaking hands. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. How's it going? Well, you know, wearing tights. Yeah, me too. I got a cape. Oh, wow. Look at that. I think my mask is better. Yeah, well, everyone can tell it's you. All right, but, you know, your hair sticking out. So they know it's you too. Oh. Anyway, smashing action. All brand new. <laughs> and not anymore. Uh, the Shield and the Wizard march today with the spirit of 76. All right. Well, okay. Uh, here's another ad of their other great comics you might want to check out. Pep Comics. Oh, boy. Featuring, yes, you guessed it, The Shield. And then, uh, <laughs> might have to find this one. <laughs> Blue Ribbon Comics. Action, mystery, thrills. What the hell is this dog doing here? His name is Rangatang. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to look for that one. Uh, Zip Comics looks like another Flash knockoff. Uh, so, uh, Steel Sterling, yeah, he sounds familiar. I don't, was he a fast super speed guy? I, I don't know. Well, might find that too. Anyway, Top Notch Comics featuring The Wizard. So I guess maybe that's his main title. I don't know. So get them at your newsstand. <laughs> well, now nah, just look them up at Comics Plus. Anywho, here we go. The Shield, G-Man Extraordinary. I thought it was Extraordinaire, but okay, whatever. So he's just saluting a bunch of exploding, I don't know, that mortar shells, and there's a tank watching it too. And he's like, I'm going to salute that, damn it. So anyway, in the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, yet our flag and the shield stand so steady fastly there. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Where do you get that? <laughs> the shield, G-Man Extraordinary, is, a, uh, is as much a symbol of loyalty and patriotism as the American flag itself. What is the meaning of the shield? How did he come to acquire his superhuman powers? What does he, why does he devote his life to the ideals of our American government? Well, <laughs> see, it's the ideals of liberty, not the, yeah, okay. This story is the answer. Ammunition is being loaded aboard one of our ships off the Jer Jersey Shore. You will supervise and be careful of sabotage. Yes, sir. Our story begins in... 1916, wow, uh, with Lieutenant Tom Higgins of the U.S. Army Intelligence in the office of his superior. Oh, okay, so yeah, for a second there, I thought he was dressed like a dentist, but uh, no, it's a uniform. <laughs> so, Higgins, who is also a scientist, 
uh, makes immediately for his laboratory. Hello, Dad. I've been mixing the sulfur and the... Pyridine or pyridine? Just as you told me, I got a blue flame reaction. Joe Higgins, son of the Army officer and scientist. Why, that means I've found the right mixture at last. My experiment is near completion. Well, yeah, but I'm the one who found... Shut up. I've worked for years on this chemical. If it is absorbed in the proper parts of the body, it would make a superhuman being of an ordinary person. Uh, I'll have to postpone the experiment until I finish this assignment. Goodbye, Dad. I'll keep stirring the mixture. Well, anyway, Lieutenant Higgins leaves for the ammunition barges, little knowing he is never destined to finish his experiment. Because two green hornets are chasing him. Two foreign-looking men pick up his trail. And on a lonely street, yeah, nobody from America wears green suits. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, they attack. Quick, into the car with him. Uh, awake at last. Now we'll find out the missing formula. Wh where am I? When Lieutenant Higgins regains... Con oh, okay. Yeah, once again, out of sequence. Yeah, okay. He, he wakes up. I'll never tell you the missing formula. We kidnapped you so that our agents can blow up the ammunition barges. But this discovery we found on you will be of much greater importance to our government. Well, Lieutenant Higgins makes a desperate break for liberty. Uh, then you die. I'm, ooh, guess again. Out the window, I must go. <laughs> what the hell? He's singing a song? What? Out the window, I must go. Don't let him escape. They shoot him in the ass. Oh, man. That's got to hurt. I've got to get to those ammunition barges before they can do any more damage. Oh, jeez. But they'll be able to follow me from my bleeding ass. I'd better hurry. Uh, Lieutenant Higgins soon arrives at the waterfront. I'll have to use this rowboat. But I won't be able to sit down. Hey, you can't. Tell it to the Marines. So he steals this guy's bomb. <laughs> As Lieutenant Higgins nears the barges, he sees those fellows jumping off the barge must be the spies. That means Lieutenant Higgins arrives too late, and his own craft is blasted to splinters by the terrific explosion. Ah! Uh, think your ass is sore now? Well, hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> the exploding ammunition hits the other ammunition barge, and a second catastrophe follows. Extra, read all about the Black Tom explosion. Lieutenant Higgins failure to carry out orders blamed. Later, an extra hits the... Okay. Well, they forgot to print it out, didn't they? Well, I'll take his word for it. So, anyway. In the hospital, mortally wounded Lieutenant Higgins calls for his son and his best friend, J.E. Hoover. <laughs> ah, jeez. You believe I was kidnapped, don't you? Yes, Dad. Me too, Tom. Tom Higgins asks his son to bend close and gasps out. Anatomy formula. S-H-I-E-L-D! Exclamation point. Carry on, Joe. Don't die, Dad! Please! He, he's dead, Joe. He served his country and so will I. I'll clear his name if it's the last thing I do. Young Joe Higgins. His resolution firmly... Uh, oh, cement, <laughs> cemented in his heart. Devotes himself to the study of chemistry. What? Ho, oh, oh, ho! Joe knows more chemistry than the professor. You're wrong on that equation, sir. It's 2CASO4-2H2O. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. You ought to go home and rest, Higgins. You've been in the lab day and night. Right after this experiment, sir. The university proudly presents the Doctor of Philosophy degree upon the most brilliant chemistry student. <laughs> Shouldn't that be a philosophy student? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's been our privilege to graduate. Mr. Joe Higgins, thank you, thank you. Now, what about my chemistry degree? <laughs> That's the one I worked on. Yeah, well, we forgot to print those out, so we're giving you this one as a consolation prize. So, uh, okay, this is years later. Yeah, boy, it, it belongs on top. Sorry, it just does. Uh, here we are. Now he's in Frankenstein's lab. Years later, Joe is still laboring to complete his father's experiment. I've got everything except this anatomical formula. S-H-I-E-L-D. What could Dad have meant? Well, it spells out the word shield. What? By Joe, that's it. <laughs> uh, one day, Joe rummages through a medical book and discovers, Here's a picture of the human body. Great ghost! Can it be? It must be. S-H-I-E-L-D. I've got it. I've got to wear this lingerie. <laughs> this skin-tight suit will help my pores <laughs> absorb this chemical. Now for that medical book again. Joe hurries back to his laboratory and dons a fibrometallic suit, an invention of his own. Yeah, yeah I don't think we want to know any more about that. Uh, <laughs> are you constipated? Well, we're going to help you with that. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess I better read this, the bottom part. But what Joe, Joe saw in the medical book. The secret of the shield revealed. Sacrum, the spinal center of the body, thought by the ancients to be the seat of the soul. Heart, pump of the body. Uh, innervation or nerve supply, control of this bodily function will imbue an individual with tremendous nervous energy, making him tireless and immune to shock and probably batshit crazy from lack of sleep and whatnot. But anyway, an individual with the strength of a hundred men. Eyes. Power of sight. Oh, I, I never would have guessed that. Lungs. Control of respiration. Damn it, I wouldn't have guessed that either. Derma. The skin. Oh, man. Oh, what, boy, silly me. And, and it covers the whole body, which the chemical makes impenetrable some kind of way. Okay. So, uh, first you slit your throat here. <laughs> Then you have all this uh, excess uh, mucus snot in your lungs, and uh, your poop turns purple. All right. All right. We're on our way. I rubbed the chemical on the parts of my anatomy. We don't need to know which parts. Uh, the formula calls for. Oh, gee, I wonder what parts. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I must lie perfectly still for 12 hours. <laughs> And let the fluoroscopic rays force the chemical into the organs of my body. Well, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, so anyway, Joe fastens himself to the table of, as fluoroscopic rays pour down on his body. And there you go. Oh, look. The rays are red, white, and blue. Do, do, do. Uh, fate has decreed it. These are the... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just a color choice on the part of the art, but it's with the gray section. These are the colors of my country on this shield-like suit. Hey, there's a cool name. And a shield it'll I'll be against its enemies. The stars I've painted on will be symbols of my creed. Truth, courage, patriotism, and justice. The shield is born. And now for the realization of his father's dream or Death. 2,000 degrees of heat, and I still don't feed it. <laughs> he decides to test it. I know. I'll set myself on fire. Hey, look, it didn't burn me. <laughs> eh, what if it didn't work? Oh, well. Here goes the next test. <laughs> so he shoots himself over. <laughs> and once again, the shield defies death. Hey, what do you know? It worked. I had no idea it would, but hey, it did. <laughs> I had these moving steel walls specifically built to test my strength. Boy, Dad must have left you a lot of money, huh? Anyway. Wow, the results are way beyond Dad's wildest dreams. Uh, Look, Betty! A suicide! This will be the final test. I'm a little hungry anyway. So he just leaps out the window and, and shrinks as he does. <laughs> they didn't really get that right, but uh, oh well. 
cup of coffee, please. Ow! It must be my indigestion. What? Indigestion doesn't make you hallucinate a man in a weird suit. Anyway, while this is happening, the FBI speaks. <laughs> You're the federal district attorney, dick. Can you prosecute, prosecute this German spy ring? There isn't enough evidence. For years, I've worked to clear Tom Higgins' name from that Black Tom scandal. I'm convinced that Hans Fritz... <laughs> hey, what gave him away <laughs> was the espionage agent responsible for that explosion. I heard what you said. <laughs> Suddenly, a weird figure burst into the office. It, it's fantastic. Oh, you're telling me. Wow. Oh. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> What's the matter, Jay Egger? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I don't mind telling you, but nobody else. Uh, what? Uh, I can take a hint. I'll go. Oh, okay. He just only wants to talk to J. Edgar Hoover. Okay. <laughs> Remember me now? Joe Higgins. What? How? I was a little... Taken aback how you stripped down right in front of me like that. I, <laughs> the shield quickly donned civilian clothing. I've worked out my father's formula. I want you to make me a special deputy. I'll get this Hans Fritz. How are you going to get him? He's going to come to me. If it's the same spy, he has my dad's sulfur... Okay. Sulfur... Sulfur... Sulfur pure... <laughs> Sulfur-pyridine formula. All he needs is the anatomical... <laughs> No, anatom <laughs> anatomical formula. I'll see to it that he uh, he knows I've got. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> there's nothing in this paper but lines. A few days later, Hans Fritz sees an obscure notice in the newspaper. Look, it must be Lieutenant Higgins' son. <laughs> it just now occurred to you, you probably could have gotten the information from his idiot kid. But anyway... And he has the missing anatomical formula. One of the country's foremost chemists, Joseph Higgins, Ph.D., has submitted his annual report to the Chemist Journal. Dr. Higgins has devoted many years to experiments begun by his father, but without any great success. The first part of the formula was lost, and Dr. Higgins has been unable to match it with the second part, which he has in his possession. <laughs> Tonight... We get the anatomical formula for the Fatherland. Deutschland über alles. Wait a minute. Maybe this is a trap. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, that night. Shh. This Higgins. This is Higgins' room. We'll make quick work of him. Suddenly. I've been expecting you, boys. Ax de Liebe. Uh, all right, now. Start talking. Where does Hans Fritz hang out? I... I'll never tell it. Okay, then, wait here on this hook while I entertain your friend. No. This fixes you. Meanwhile, the other spy attacks from behind. Yeah. Did you want me? You're a demon. The shield turns on his attacker. You need a little air, too. Aye! He hoists him out the window. Wait for me! And leaps after him. <laughs> The shield lands before this. Well, I guess he weighs more than him. I, I don't know. Ready to talk now, or do you want another ride? No, no, Fritz is at 23 Maple Street. As the shield proceeds immediately to Maple Street. Ach, I must warn Fritz of this demon. Hans Fritz is warned of the shield's approach. What? He is dressed in a shield? <laughs> <laughs> and he makes his hair go white. He's so scared. He must have worked out the formula. We've been tricked. So the formula does turn your clothes into an American flag. All right. Before Fritz can make a hasty departure. Hello, going somewhere. I'll, it's him. The shield. What do you want? I want a full confession from you about the Black Tom explosion in 1960. <laughs> All right. Fritz's hand finds a hidden button. And releases a trap door beneath his feet. Oh crap, I meant that for you, oh! Hey! Stupid American sign! You can't uh, count <laughs> outwit Hans Fritz! 
I don't need any button to open this trap door. He's gone, but not for long. The shield runs along an underground passageway. Um, okay, I can't tell which sequence. The spy, oh, no, yeah, the spy reaches a secret hangar. The shield will never catch me now. So he <laughs> comes out like Bugs Bunny. Uh, that's using my head. Oh, oh, there he goes in that plane. The shield hurtles upward as though propelled by giant springs. Boing, goes up and catches it. Made it! The shield makes his way to the plane's propeller. And now for some fun. Hey there, Fritz. How about that confession? Uh, we both die first. The shield stops the plane's propeller with his bare hands. Okay, have it your own way. The plane plummets downward to certain destruction. Stop! I'll get this! I thought you'd see things my way. And then he applies the brakes like in the again in Bugs Bunny, and it just stops like that. <laughs> Fritz signs the confession. See how easy it was? And then shakes his hand. Okay. <laughs> of course... It, you know, it was under torture, so is it really admissible? Uh, well, you know, it was back in the day, you know. I'm through with you, but the police aren't. Uh, to the local police station. Here's the ringleader, chief. Good. Now we can get the rest of the gang. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, right. There's more of them. Ah, oh, geez. Well, anyway, here's Fritz. <laughs> the next day in Hoover's office. Here's Fritz's confession, clearing my father's name. The whole spy ring has been rounded up. It's amazing. We need men like you in the service. But you'll have to pass the examination like everybody else. I'm your man. I was hoping you'd say that. Now, now strip. Yeah, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to observe every inch of you. <laughs> anyway, and this is only a sample of what is to follow. Oh, boy, can you stand it? Can you wait? <laughs> There never has been a more potent force for justice in the history of the world than the shield, performing legendary feats of strength immune to the greatest of man-known shocks, tireless yet ever human. The shield becomes a byword for Americanism and a constant source of terror for those gangster forces ever conspiring, <laughs> conspiring against society. Now for another adventure of the G-Man Extraordinary. Well, we're out of time for that now. But uh, we'll take a peek at that next time on Mr. Nelson's Sunday Comics. Thanks for watching and listening. Say, while you're still here, why not like and subscribe and share with your many friends. Yes. Also, check out my many stores <laughs> in the link description below. Yes, where you can get t-shirts hats, mugs, all those goodies with my artwork on them. Oh, yeah. And head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can also catch me at my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, on RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on BitChute.com and now on Rumble.com. Oh, my goodness. So many places to watch me and my stuff oh yeah and if that's not enough for you well you can follow me on many social media platforms and say hi to your old pal mr nelson <laughs>